Okay, uh, this is the uh, the Independent eighty eight five FM. My name's Mookie or Mark, if you prefer, and uh, it's a what we call a here at home artist interview. And we've got both members of Bachelor in the Zoom room today. Uh, it's amazing to have you in the same room together. Uh, where are you right now? We're in LA right now in my uh, home studio attic in LA. Yeah. Uh, so is that where the uh, the magic happens? Maybe the demos, maybe a little bit of recording. Um, actually, this is, we haven't actually really hung out in this attic much together. Um, this is my view. It's really actually weird to see myself in this space on Zoom because we mixed the whole album over Zoom and this was my view of Melina was like exactly what you're seeing right now. Um, and then coming here in real life was kind of trippy I'm getting this is like ellen's first time being here like a couple days ago like like she's never been to my house after right. this whole year yeah <laughs> incredible so it's uh, it's melina from jsom and ellen from pale hound uh, two titans of the indie rock world coming together wow. do you like that well yeah i like that, I like that. It's powerful yeah I, i've never been called a titan yeah that's, that's cool no it's hot wow yeah, yeah. Cool. It just kind of happened. It's like when you do public speaking or you get in front of a hot microphone, it's like what you wanted to say never really comes out the way you wanted it. And that just yeah. sort of happened. So I'll run with it. So oh, please yeah. do. I that was it. great. Um, our listeners have been hearing the song Stay in the Car for, uh, gosh, probably a couple of months now. We've been getting some pretty good feedback. I just had the opportunity to sit down with the full length record, Doom and Sun. And there's some tracks on there which are amazing. I think that uh, our listeners need to hear uh, more of the album. So I think songs like uh, Back of My Hand and uh, Anything at All. Uh, we'll probably make our playlist really soon. But if you don't mind taking us back to the inception of Bachelor, where did you both meet? And uh, when did you realize you both sort of uh, captured lightning in a bottle as far as uh, the, the creative process? Um, well, we met like officially in person at a show that we played together in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, but it was only like two shows run that we did together. Um, so after that, we kind of like stayed in touch with like DMs and texting and seeing each other for like five minutes here and there at a show. Um, but then back in, was that 2018? Like the summer of 2018? Yeah, 2018. Yeah. Summer of 2018, we uh, got together and like recorded a song together. And that was the song Sand Angel that's on the record. Um, and then that day was just like so fun. And we like gelled really well and kind of like got to know each other in a real way. and we like definitely wanted to keep going after mm. that. Yeah. I often wonder about um, collaborating as far as songwriting, because, you know, songs could be so personal. Do you ever feel apprehensive to share your music with others? I definitely do. I, mm. I'm, I feel like I'm a huge baby when it comes to showing music, because I'm always like I write something and I record it and I'm like, I'm going to show this to my friends, but it's never like that. It's like, you know, a lot of people are going to hear it. But with Ellen, it's fun and it's easy, especially when you're collabing with someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah. kind of had to break through like a small barrier at first where we like that day that we got together, like especially around like writing lyrics because we had like written yeah. like a riff and stuff. I think it's lyrics that trips you up the most. For oh, sure. yeah. And that's kind of what trips me up too, because it's so vulnerable, you know, it's just like you're, it's like letting people read your diary or something. Mm -hmm. um, but that day we were kind of like, well, what's like something fun that we can write about that's like really vulnerable. And so we wrote a song about a sex dream and that kind of knocked Naturally. down that wall. Naturally. Of course. Yeah, it'll, uh, I guess, uh, a good icebreaker, just like delve in head first. Head first, <laughs> gotta go. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Um, it's been said that you rented a spot in Topeka Canyon, which we love because uh, it seems like you're locals. Are you both originally from Los Angeles? No. Ellen's from the East Coast. I'm from uh, Northern California, like the Bay Area. You're from Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut, so very different. <laughs> but Southern California is home right now. To Molina, it's going to be my home soon. I'm moving here at the end of July. Woo! Amazing. So yeah. we, now we both uh, will officially claim you as our own. And exactly. we love you. Yes, that's great. That's so, an honor. Uh, you rented a spot in Topanga Canyon. You schlepped up all the equipment and um, and produced, produced your own record. Is that right? We did. Yeah. 
Incredible. And uh, you decided to do it apparently during a pandemic, uh, during civil unrest, uh, during wildfires, during all sorts of stuff. I wanted to ask you sort of in broad strokes, what are some of the themes that made it to this new record? We actually didn't record it during quite during the pandemic, but we did record it during uh, wildfires. It was back right in January of 2020. So it was when like Australia was on fire, um, but it was before it was kind of when there were like whispers in the media about um, coronavirus. Um, right. But we didn't know what was coming. And we actually like the recording process was kind of funny practice for quarantine because we really just like quarantined ourselves um, to record it. And we were like, wow, what a novelty thing we're doing. <laughs> and then it yeah. turned into like, oh, that's just what life is now. Um, um, yeah. But yeah, some themes include like climate change. And we were talking a lot about like sexuality and queerness and relationships. I think we also really bond over being like we're the same age and we're both like queer women who have like fronted projects since we were really young. So we have like a pretty similar experience to relate to each other with. Yeah, we have a lot in common in terms of like pop culture too. So mm -hmm. it's just like when you meet someone like that, it's like, yeah. That's that's so good. Um, how are you consuming music, both of you? Are you playing vinyl at home? Are you streaming? Are you um, doing any of those things? Are you listening to anybody else's music these days? We only listen to ourselves. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Yeah, we only yeah. make music so we can hear ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> no. We're huge egomaniacs. No, I, I'm really embarrassed to say that I think we both listen to Spotify, just giving right into the hand of the man. I try to do YouTube a lot. Like, I'm trying to go um, onto YouTube when I like a song and I like to look at the music videos because I feel like I don't do that as often. Because usually if there's a cool song you like, it has a music video. And it's fun like that. True. But then if you go to Bandcamp, too, it's better because you can pay for their music. Bandcamp. That's right. right. They're doing the best, yeah. wouldn't you say, as far as uh, paying artists? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why like... anyone else is like them. Like they have the best model. Like you can have your merch there as an artist and like have everything in your control. Yeah, I think there's been uh, a few revolts um, going on. Uh, none of them have really gained traction. But I saw the other day someone put together a group um, basically protesting Spotify you know, uh, on behalf yeah. of artists and, and artists rights and all of that stuff, maybe uh, we'll get to that point. But it is crazy these days, like usually back in the day or before, um, you know, Prince and Radiohead were really the only bands that could put out their own music. Now everybody's sort of putting out their own music, you know, yeah. um, it's the Wild West and nobody really knows what the hell is going on. Uh, we all just kind of have to figure it out right now. Um, it's been said in some bio that I read earlier that you two were delirious with creativity <laughs> in the studio um, just because you have such a great rapport. In many different ways, too. Yeah, delirious in a lot of ways. Like, Not just creatively. <laughs> yeah, delirious in basically any way that you can imagine. We kind of like, yeah, we really bring out the, the worst in each other. Kind wow. Of. Not the worst, just the, the wildest. We bring out like kind of like the inner 12 year old boys in each other, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but like when we're not, you know, screaming at the top of our lungs about nothing, we are like, I'm very inspired by Melina. And uh, I think like working together was just like, I feel like we just kind of like, we're just constantly rolling and have like a really good momentum the whole time. Yeah. What does that mean for the future of JSOM and Palehound? It's not that it's over. We those are like our main projects and right. we both have our own like tours and like dreams for that. But we're still going to write music together because I'm literally going to force Ellen to hang out with me all the time every single day when she moves here. I love it. You're just scratching the surface. It's like you weren't even really allowed to go out and do stuff around town the past 12 or 14 months, you know? Yeah. 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 But it's like I feel like it's yeah it's easy to balance like our own solo projects in this so far mm -hmm. at least you mm -hmm. know because there's always going to be time off from each thing or like you know album cycles flip over and stuff um and it just kind of like helps i mean me personally grow and it makes me like inspired to build into something else for my other things that i do and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. can wait to get back into the venues i mean Same. yeah I just, you know, uh, Hotel Cafe. I love the Fonda. I think they have the, uh, a yeah. nice outdoor area on top. 
big smoking oh, wow. patio up there, you know. I think uh, I saw Bikini Kill there, or maybe I didn't. That, but that's a great theater. That or is a great venue. Theater. Yeah, I, I think it is. And just getting back into the bars, I, I hope um, we could we could do that. Um, before the pandemic, the station was doing a really good job of um, getting into the venues uh, around Hollywood and um, some other spots. So hopefully, um, you know, when the dust settles, maybe we could do a uh, sort of private members event for this public radio station and get Bachelor Ooh. up on a stage somewhere. I mean, that would be amazing to yeah. do a live thing. That sounds fun. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, we're totally down for that. Uh, I just got to get clearance from my higher ups and uh, they're very apprehensive, you know, as you could imagine. Um, September 24th, there is a show at the theater at the Ace Hotel, which is very cool. Oh, before yeah. I get into that, I'm looking in the background. I'm seeing keyboards and I don't know if that's a bass guitar back there, yes, but yeah. knobs and things. And <laughs> Melina, Melina, would you consider yourself like a gearhead? To the fullest extent, to the fullest degree, it's uh, I'm not ashamed anymore. I am. <laughs> She's such a nerd. Ah! It's cute. I love it. She reads user manuals for fun. Oh, wow. Really? They're yeah. important. They are important. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's amazing. She's such a, yeah, you are a huge gearhead. Thanks, yeah. dude. Well, I don't, I don't speak that language, but I was curious because it looks like you have a great home studio set up right there. Thank um, you. It looks like a spaceship. Kind of. It does, right? And yeah. Yeah. not many of us have attics where we could just hang out in. That's pretty cool, too. I've never seen an attic in L.A. I, I was really shocked to see it. I think it's probably like illegal, but, you know. It, <laughs> It <laughs> could be. I don't think it's illegal. Uh, <laughs> September 24th at the theater at the Ace Hotel. Will that be your first uh, live concert as Bachelor? No, like, not, not, no, because we're going on tour starting in Richmond. Virginia is actually going to be our first oh, one. Oh, that's yeah. a stupid question. That's part of a no, huge okay. tour, right? No, yeah, with right. Lucy Dacus. Yeah, but it'll be our wow. first LA show. Uh, Lucy Degas is amazing. That sounds so yeah. super cool. Yeah, so that'll be the first L.A. show. But even before that, coming up on Thursday, the 10th, seems like a huge endeavor. And I know how tough it is just to get one band to play a show. I'm looking at the list and you just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Uh, it's really remarkable. It's the Doom and Sun Fest. Uh, hosted by you, Bachelor. It's on, uh, again, uh, June 10th, 3 p.m. Pacific. And uh, it seems like anyone who wants to RSVP can attend. Is that right? That's right. Uh, and you got Barty Strange and Ben Gibbard and Claude and Courtney B. Courtney Barnett. Uh, hooray for the <laughs> riffraff. Uh, St. Panther. Meg Duffy from Hand Habits, who we love. Uh, Sylvan Esso, Tank and the Bangas. And that's literally just scratching the surface as far as who's contributing to the Doom and Sun Fest. Who came up with the concept and how tough was it to get all these artists on board to play? Um, neither. Well, I guess it was we both kind of came up with the concept because with the concept like came about before we thought we were going to be able to tour at all. So we kind of like had an idea for a live stream, but then like as time went on, we were like, man, people are getting tired of live streams and it's going to be like right at the end of live stream season. So we should make it interesting. Um, so that's when we decided to like ask a bunch of our favorite bands and friends to play. And um, a shocking amount of people said yes. Thus this like massive lineup. I don't, we were not anticipating um, such a <laughs> response. <laughs> yeah, Did you think yeah. it was crazy when like uh, Ben Gibbard says, sure, we'll do it. Um, is it, do you just think it was crazy that, oh my God, like I, I didn't realize that, uh, you know, Ben liked our music or cares about the environment so much. I'm sure you were surprised that a lot of people said yes basically i think so yeah but we're also like kind of friends with some of these people so it was like easy to slide into the dms for that and like yeah <laughs> like with ben it's like we've been emailing too and he's just like so sweet um and he's just like is so down to help with stuff and then same with just like other friends like ellen has a ton of friends on that list that she just texted which is great yeah. you know we wanted to build like a community too around this festival and do it in a way that felt like natural and like, I don't know, mm. less like businessy, you know? Yeah. 
But then it turned into this like amazing lineup that looks like uh like a Coachella lineup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's huge and it's amazing. Um, I've it's yeah. it's crazy. So I feel like Ben Gibbard as well was one of the first ones to really take to the internet to do some live performances early on in the pandemic. We were we were seeing him in his home studio up in Seattle. Um, there is a yeah. charity affiliated, and it is the uh, Seeding Sovereignty. Um, I imagine that's a uh, fundraising um, uh, organization that is near and dear to your hearts. Could you speak a little bit on uh, seeding sovereignty? Yeah, um, so they're like a mutual aid network um, that is indigenous run. And um, I've been in, in touch and kind of friends with them for a while because they did this like really big mask campaign like about a year ago where they were like sending masks to musicians mainly and promoting. And it was like, if you buy a mask, one gets donated because indigenous communities all around the states were getting completely ignored around COVID. Mm. Um, and like rates of infection were like way up in those communities. Um, and the original idea for the festival was like climate centered, um, which we've expanded on since then. But at that time we were like, well, the, the best partner that we could have um, would be indigenous people because they are like the caretakers of this earth and they know this land better than anyone else. And if we're gonna talk about climate, we like have to, um, yeah, support them. So um, yeah, like it's RSVP for free, the festival, but we're like highly encouraging donations if for anyone who can. Okay, it's been described as a somewhat indie rock telethon. So people could RSVP and they could attend and donate as they watch some of these performances, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And will it be capped off by a, a full on bachelor show? It will. We're playing the album from front to back. Wait, from the beginning to the top. To, from the top to the bottom? Top to the bottom amazing um so what does that setup sort of look like uh, do you have some hired guns as far as other bandmates yeah we do we have zoe brecker on drums and then elise who's from oceanator really awesome band um playing guitar and keyboards and then us it's a four piece so it's pretty rocking we actually got to listen to the mixes the other day actually last night yeah and we we were jamming to it sounds great yeah we practice a lot with them and we like, there's a really good vibe between the four of us. And I think like, we are both kind of nervous about inviting other people into this cause we're so like same brain, but they're yeah. like perfect. They they like gelled right in, in every way, like immediately. Especially after not playing for a year, we were all like in the rehearsal room, so shocked at how well we were gelling together. Yeah. And we, just, we like, were just uh, laughing. Yeah, we were yeah. just laughing the whole time and just like, we're so stoked. Yeah. Did you feel like you came alive because you weren't able to perform with others for such a long time? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine how it's going to feel when like um, you could like get into a venue, you know, going to cry. We're, we've both we're talked cry. a lot about how we're both going to cry a lot. The first show that happens, it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be, gonna be embarrassing. I'm getting all emotional just thinking about it. I, like know, I, me too. I have, a, yeah, I have a short list of post pandemic things that, that I want to do. And uh, it's crazy. It's almost as if like, I'm getting into this lifestyle now and I'm almost like apprehensive to do those other things that I've been talking about for such a long time. Like I like wearing sweatpants and programming the radio station from home every day. You know, it'll be tough to get get uh, back out there and acclimated. Mm -hmm. We did do a few drive in concerts um, cool. over the past several months and just being there to hear the snare drum during sound check um, was like the most magical thing because we haven't had that oh, in yeah. such a long time, you know? Yeah. Oh, like so loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to stand in front of the PA at whatever. Here's my first show back. <laughs> like, I just want it like. In yeah. My face. <laughs> uh, uh the band is bachelor uh online where can people find you on instagram at bachelor underscore band um same twitter. with twitter same yeah. with twitter yeah and we do have like a link tree that has links to uh the event the doom and sun fest and also just like links to our music and um merch mm -hmm. and any everything like that 
Um, I mean, I would say so far so good. The new record just came out and, uh, people, you know, the internet is buzzing. The bloggers are blogging and, uh, you guys, you know, have a lot of momentum. It seems like going into uh post pandemic life. So I'm hope you feel really good about all this stuff. Oh yeah. We're having a blast. Yeah, we are. Thank you. Hell yeah. 88.5 FM, KCSN, and KCSN HD1, Northridge, Los Angeles. KSBR and KSBR HD1, Mission Viejo. A service of California State University, Northridge, and Saddleback College. Member-supported public radio. Streaming on the web at 88.5 FM.org.